Good morning. Hi, this is Phil McPhail, a realtor up here in Northern Maine. And today I'm gonna to take you on a trip to a off-grid cabin on 20 acres in the middle of the woods in Eastern Maine on a wilderness pond. Beautiful post and beam cabin. Uh, come along for the ride. I'm at my office now. We got the side-by-side -side loaded on the back. Uh, this is uh, this road is not plowed in the winter, although it's not too far from a plowed road. So we're gonna trailer there, ride in, uh, take some, take a good look at the property and the land and the lake and the town that it's located in. So come along for the ride. Leaving my office here at West Broadway in Lincoln, um, we're gonna head east on Route 6. If you were coming here, uh, you'd be coming up I-95 and you get off the Lincoln exit and follow that into Lincoln and pick up Route 6 east. Uh, Lincoln would be the nearest service town and it, there's pretty much everything here you need from hospital to, to a couple of grocery stores, Walmart, hardware stores, mom and pop businesses, and restaurants. It's a nice little town, about 4,000 to 5,000 people. Uh, we've got a bunch of lakes here as well. Uh, but unlike Lakeville, our tax structure is a little bit higher here, but we do have a lot more services. As you're coming into Lincoln, uh, this is Route 2 approaching Main Street in Lincoln, where 2 and 6 meet up. So you're going to recognize this point if you're coming here or if you've been here before. Uh, directly ahead of me is Madinaw Cook Lake, and that's one of the 13 lakes here in Lincoln, Maine. Uh, this little public park right ahead of us is your monument. You're going to take a left right here by the Big Loon. This is the Main Street here in Lincoln. Uh, we have a Martin surplus and salvage store, steaks and stuff, grocery and deli, uh, a whole bunch of uh, small businesses, house of pizza. Uh, we've got several car dealerships here if you need work done on your vehicles while you're here in Maine. It's got a Ford dealer right here. And right here at the end of uh, this section of Main Street, we're going to take a right and head east on Route 6. Halfway between um, Lincoln and Springfield, we're coming into the little village of Lee, Maine. Uh, Lee's got a, that you can see off there in the distance, a small ski area, a uh, couple little stores here, and a restaurant and gas station. So, it, you know, if you didn't need much and you wanted to come out partway to get some services, you can get them here in Lee. And this is right on Route 6. After Lee, you're going to come into the town of Springfield, Maine. Springfield's a very small town, little village here with a single store, post office, and this would be the same post office that delivers the mail to Lakeville. Um, Springfield is known for the Springfield Fair every Labor Day weekend. Not a whole lot else here. There is a local uh, snowmobile and ATV club. You can see the sleds crossing the uh, Route 6 right now in front of us. Uh, that's the clubhouse right here on your left. They maintain a, a really nice trail system for both snowmobiles and ATVs. They have dinners and benefit suppers and things to help raise money to take care of the trail system. And from here, uh, we're going to continue on Route 6 past Route 169 here on the left. We're going to go about another three quarters of a mile up this hill and we're going to turn onto the Bottle Lake Road, which is the only road into, into Lakeville, the only paved road. So about one half mile after the uh, Route 169 intersection with 6, we're going to see the Bottle Lake Road right here on the right. It's the very top of that three lane hill coming out of town of Springfield. I'm going to turn on to this road. And like I said, this is the only paved road in the town of, of uh, Lakeville. Well, a part, portion of the Duck Lake Road is paved. But this is, um, this is how you're going to be accessing it, coming south onto Bottle Lake Road. All right, coming in on the Bottle Lake Road in Springfield, the first few miles is in still in Springfield. About the bottom of this hill right here, we're going to cross into the town of Lakeville. Lakeville's got a population of about 100 people, 105, I think, the last census. Uh, this is a really neat little town. Uh, there's 11 lakes in this town, kind of how it got its name of Lakeville. And the town line is right here, we're just crossing it. Um, that's the Duck Lake Road here on our left, and that'll take you right to the landing at Duck Lake. That's one of the 11 lakes. So we've got Duck Lake here, Bottle Lake, Keg Lake, Junior Lake. 
we got upper and lower Cisladopsis lakes. We got horseshoe and Lombard and two upper upper and lower pug lakes. So there's a lot of water in this town and most of the town is just big rolling hills and small mountains, elevations, oh between four or five hundred to over a thousand feet. We get some really great views and places. As a matter of fact, uh, Getcho Mountain is off to my left here. Let's stop for a second and I'll I'll show you that. This is a view you'll be seeing as you're driving in along on the Bottle Lake Road. It's a really scenic, scenic town. Just as you come into Lakeville, um, crest that hill we just stopped and saw the view at, you're going to see the local transfer station for the town right here on the left. And that's open Wednesday from 7 to 12 and Sunday to 8 to 4. And right here, we'll pull in real quick. This old, I think this might have been an old schoolhouse at one time. But this is the town office, Lakeville, right here. This office is open for half a day on, I believe, Wednesdays. Um, so, you know, there's not a lot of town services here in Lakeville. There's only 100 people. Not a lot of need for those services, but if you are looking for a place with all kinds of services, don't come to Lakeville. Don't, this isn't your place. One of the nice things about this town is a $4.44 per thousand mill rate, which is nearly unheard of in New England. So taxes are extremely low. This beautiful post and beam cabin we're going to look at today on 20 acres of land, the taxes are less than $500 a year. I dare you to find a place where you can pay less and have this much real estate. It's, it's actually, uh, for those who like to be self-sufficient, very refreshing not to spend four or five hundred dollars a month on your taxes. This is one of the views along Water Lake Road. You got Dill Ridge off here to the left and one of the higher peaks around is Almanac Mountain back there just north of the of the uh, Bottle Lake Road. Okay we're nearing the end of the Bottle Lake Road and uh, the pavement and right here near the end, just before you get to the Bottle Lake boat landing, which would be straight ahead here, we're going to turn right onto deep. So as I said, uh, we're turning onto Depot Road, and we are in the middle of mud season. It's the middle of March, and the ground is thawing and freezing and thawing, and we do get a lot of mud this time of year. We call it our fifth season. This is uh, still a depot road. We are going to be arriving at the end of the town maintained section of this road and I'm gonna park here and we'll offload and take a ride into Horseshoe Lake. And if you're coming in here without me or with somebody else, there's the East Shore Road right there on the left where that trailer, white trailer's pointing. Down in there is how you would, uh, how you would access Horseshoe Lake. Okay, we've come down the East Shore Road, and this is um, Middle Road. And you look for the signs that say Wild Fox Resort, and follow that sign. This is a snowmobile trail that crosses uh, Middle Road right here where it meets East Shore Road. So if you're a rider, you can jump right on the groomed ITS 105 trail right here in the town of Lakeville. And Middle Road will eventually lead to Fox Run where we're heading. And oh, by the way, um, if you decide to buy tracks for your side-by-side, -side, uh, get a full cab. Don't, don't do what I'm doing right now. Mud season, we got snow, we got mud, a little bit of everything. Do yourself a favor, get the cab fully enclosed. Okay, we've arrived at the property here on Fox Run, 349 Fox Run, and this is the access road coming in. We're still a ways from the cabin. The property is all on the left-hand side of this road right here. And one of the nice features of this property, and you can, well, I should have put my snowshoes on. 
Uh, right there is the property pen. This property was surveyed when uh, my clients purchased it and all the lines are very well defined and you can see an overlay of that survey description on the map here. And this is our location here in the in the northwest corner of the lot. Well, we've arrived here now at um, Fox Run, and the first thing you're gonna notice about this property are these just massive old growth hemlock trees in here that shade this lot all summer long. And the driveway here behind me leads into the cabin. On the right side of the driveway, <clears throat> we have this really nice pole barn here for storage with a sliding door that can be locked here, metal roof, and storage for ATVs, implements, maybe some firewood in there. And the cabin over here on the lake side. And this sits back approximately 100 feet from the deck to the uh, the lake shore and that's the required setback in almost any great pond today. This is winter, um, the snow is melting pretty quickly, but you can notice, you'll notice that my clients don't come here in the winter. They've got a very nice pitch to this roof and a good overhang, plus it's all post and beam construction so it takes the snow load well. All the snow you can see that's fallen off it over the course of the winter. So this, this roof system is doing its job very well. As you're looking at the cabin here, you'll notice uh, there's a clearing off here to my right. That's your leach field. There's a septic tank approximately right there in the center of the shot. Kind of hard to tell with a foot and a half of snow on the ground. But then there's the cabin. And we'll walk around the other side over here. And this is where you're going to find the drilled well. But before we get to that, um, this little shed type building here, this, this property is built on a gravel pad with concrete piers it sets on. You can see them in the corner. This little out building here is for water heater and the entrance for your, your water supply. So you can see, sorry about the banging. There's your pressure tank because it's all been drained for the winter and your gas fired water heater. This, uh, this little building also has the metal roof to keep the snow from weighing it down and crushing it. And this side of the cabin over here to the left side is a beautiful little screen porch. Come out here when the insects get tough here for a month or so in the summer. In the evenings especially, you might want to sit out here and enjoy the lake view without uh, bothered, being bothered by any insects. And right there is the drilled well. We'll have all the information about this well in the property information package that's attached to the map link in the description below this video. Well, you have to use your imagination, but their picnic table, they, they have a nice little rock fireplace next to that big boulder right there. And of course, here's the cabin well. And one thing you're going to notice here is their deck. Uh, they don't have a railing on it. Uh, probably there ought to be one, but they've chosen not to have it here. Uh, there's not a lot of code enforcement off officers out this way, and quite honestly, they don't enforce that kind of code in the unorganized townships like that are managed by LUPC like uh, uh, Lakeville is. I need to mention that this uh, cabin sets on 20 acres of forested land, and my clients have very minimally cleared this site. You could clear more here and still stay within the rules. They like their privacy, um, but if you wanted to open this up a little more, you certainly can. You, this cabin sits nearly in the center here of 700 feet of frontage. And uh, out here is Horseshoe Lake. That peninsula over there is what we call the frog. And the biggest part of the lake and the deepest part is down in that section straight out ahead of this lot. One of the other cool features of this property, again, this is a huge white pine tree. This is our state tree, and this one is probably 30, 
three, four inches in diameter at the butt, but it's up there a long way. Towers above all the other large trees around. And that's right between the shore and the cabin behind us. Down here on the lake shore, my clients have a wooden walkway that leads out to their dock. The dock system is pulled in for the winter, but there's a number of sections of it here that extend out into the lake so you, they can park their boat here. You're not gonna be able to see a whole lot of the lake right now, the bottom, but you see this, the, the uh, bottom of the lake out here is kind of a fine gravel right out in front of this ca cabin. And the front edge heads down that way. And at the end of this shot, the stream that runs out of Horseshoe Lake, that actually feeds out into Junior Lake. We'll talk about this lake a little more in depth here in a minute. And you wanna know what we do in the winter? Way down off the far point, there's a group of people out there fishing for probably white perch this time of year. This is an excellent lake for perch fishing, summer and winter. And right here is our property pin on the shore of the lake. And this is on the stream side that ex exits Horseshoe Lake. And one thing I'd mention to you, if you're up here in the wintertime, the month of March especially, we start getting some real long sunny days. Temperatures start to moderate a fair amount. The lakes are usually pretty solid. There's, there's probably 24 inches of ice here on this lake. You could drive a Sherman tank on it. But when you get near the shores, and you can see right here in this shot, the sun beats on that brown bank with the rocks and heats them up and it will melt the ice near the shore. So when you come out on the lake, just be careful you don't fall in. It's not pleasant, the water's not warm yet. So there's the frog here, the bay that goes around that side of it, the stream over there to the left. And again, that's the, the largest part of the lake is down through there to the south. Um, Horseshoe Lake is about 400 acres in surface area. The deepest spot straight out ahead of this shot at 25 feet. This is considered a warm water fishery. Uh, it does connect into cold water through the stream into Junior Lake. But there's some really nice trophy sized smallmouth bass in this pond. My clients had the pleasure of catching a few out of here. And then if you want to eat a few fish though, there's an abundance of white perch, and they certainly uh, are very tasty fish and usually are pretty aggressive feeders. So along the shore here from that pin, we've got about 700 feet of frontage, and it goes all the way around this point. Well, my clients have put their cabin in the, the right spot. It's around the corner here, up there in the woods, out of the northwest winds. I came around this point, and it's like summer on the east side, but this northwest side, the wind is howling over here. And that property continues along this shore for several hundred more feet. We're here on the western side of the lot frontage now, and I've opted to come in here out of that wind. That, that is really blowing 20, 30 mile an hour gusts. There's the other property pin, and the boundary line is spotted and marked. Can see a ribbon in the foreground and if your eyes are real good you might see the orange paint in the background. I'm gonna fall, I'm gonna walk you up through this wooded section along the shore here, it's beautiful. Like I said earlier, this this lake shore side of this property is just beautiful with some really older trees in here. I bet some of these hemlocks are a couple hundred years old. There's a little bit of a trail along the shore here. Of course you'd have to keep it up with a the blowdowns in the spring and winter. But there's our lake right off here to the right. And this is, there's some hardwoods in here, but primarily this is spruce fir, hemlock pine, a little bit of white birch and some maple mixed in with it. I know it's a little difficult with the snow piled in here, but just imagine this in the summertime, and then in the fall, sitting on this front porch, no camps, people in sight in any direction. You're in the middle of 20 acres of forested land, 
in an area with 100 people of population in an area of over 20,000 acres. All I can hear out here right now is the wind. Let's head on in and take a look around this cabin. We're entering the western side door. And if you don't mind, I'll widen the angle on this so you get a little bit better perspective of the cabin. But as we come in, we have a bath off to our left right here. And then we enter the kitchen, open concept of the cabin. I don't have the power on right now. They do have generator power here, but uh, the camera's picking it up pretty well. Nice kitchen, got a center island, works surface here, some cabinet space, we do have a unique gas refrigerator, and a gas cook stove and oven. Around this way, this is the living area, and we have a nice yodel wood stove that will adequately heat this even in the winter time. I think you can heat this no problem with that wood stove. Notice these large, uh, I think they're 10 by 10 posts here carrying the, the load. And you also see them in the walls as part of the post and beam structure. Over here behind the kitchen, we have the, the only downstairs sleeping space, small bedroom here. It's all finished with knotty pine walls, good quality windows, and plenty of closet space. And the bathroom, you know, just because you're out here in the middle of the main woods doesn't mean you have to rough it. With a drilled well, full septic system, flush toilets, full shower and sink, just like home with a lot less people. So from the living space here, we have a nice set of stairs, all nice wood treads. This takes us up and around to the sleeping loft up here. And this is winter, folks. This camp has been winterized and nothing is where it would be placed while they're using it. So please keep that in mind. This will look nice if, if it hasn't sold by the time spring rolls around. We'll come back and film it when it's, when it's using the way they use it when they're living here. But this is plenty of room up here for hobbies. You could sleep five or six people, no problem. As a matter of fact, there's beds up here for six right now. There's your stove pipe coming up and your insulated chimney exiting the roof line right here. I just measured this structural uh, beam coming up here and these are eight by eights. Uh, plenty of wood to support what they're doing and this ceiling and walls here are insulated with rigid foam. Back down here in the living space and this other side door here goes out onto the screen porch. Of course in the summertime all of these chairs would be out on the deck. But this makes a nice place to sit, enjoy the breeze, listen to the birds, and the mosquitoes can't get you. And yeah, Maine does have some insects, but they're not here forever. They go away pretty quick. And heat of the summer. This cabin has a great floor plan for living out here in the woods. Uh, you could live here year-round. You'd have to plow some road, but it's possible you could live here. Uh, you'd probably want to upgrade the power system to maybe a solar with some battery options, but that's, you know, just a little extra money and you can make that happen. Uh, the floor plan here is, is very nice. You've got a big open kitchen, living, dining area, uh, loft upstairs for both hobbies and sleeping extra guests, your downstairs bedroom, and a bath. Check out our schematic here of the floor plan. We'll, we'll link here in this video and we'll actually put it here so you can see how this is laid out. We talk about a great location out here in Lakeville. Um, we are in the middle of thousands of acres of relatively undeveloped land. There's probably only, uh, I think there's less than 12 camps on this entire pond, 400 acres, which is pretty amazing with miles of undeveloped shorefront. 
This connects up into Junior Lake, which eventually runs into West Grand Lake. That lake system has tens of thousands of acres that have been conserved, miles of frontage that will never be developed. You know, the, the fishing here from smallmouth bass and perch here in Horseshoe to some fantastic lake trout and uh, landlocked salmon fishing in the West Grand uh, lakes like Junior and West Grand itself, Pocumpkus. If you like fly fishing, the village of Grand Lake Stream, you can actually reach it through the private road system here on the other side of the lake, or you can take the highway down, which is a little bit longer, but probably faster. Um, this property is located only about 82 miles northeast of Bangor, Maine. From Portland, Maine, it's 209 miles, and most of that's I-95 driving. Boston, uh, I know a lot of you folks uh, like to come up here from Massachusetts, five hours and 10 minutes, you should be right here at this cabin. Thanks for joining me on the tour of this cabin here in Lakeville, Maine today. Uh, what can I say, beautiful property, 20 acres of land, 700 feet of frontage, custom built post and beam cabin, all natural wood, just beautiful. Um, price on this property is $425,000. The taxes are only $444 annually. You won't find a better price on taxes anywhere in Maine that I'm aware of with this much lakefront and a quality building like this one. Hey, while you're here watching our videos, don't forget down here to like and subscribe and ring that bell so you get notification every time we make a new video. I know a lot of people call me and said, hey, I didn't see a new video until it was already sold. Well, Sometimes YouTube does not throw that into your feed unless you're signed up. So make sure you subscribe and make sure you ring that bell for notification. Oh, I almost forgot to mention this cabin here in Lakeville. It does have an in-law bathroom. So, you know, if you've got a lot of guests that are showing up without much notice, you got some great facilities right here for them.